Norwood stress test. We're gonna start by flexing the elbow to 90 degrees. That is not mandatory to do in that order, but it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to work with his arm. It is a less long lever arm, which makes it easier for me to manipulate what I'm doing at the shoulder and to focus on the shoulder. We are already at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. We're going to abduct the shoulder 60 degrees. It's already extra rotated. Now we're going to add the horizontal A deduction down. It is optional to do this at 60 degrees and 100 degrees. It is beneficial to do these tests at varying angles because the different ligaments that stabilize the glenohumeral joint are more and less active at different ranges of shoulder abduction. We did 60 degrees, 90 degrees elbow flexion, 90 degrees of external rotation. And now I'm going to horizontally adduct the arm. And if possible, I'm gonna actually switch arms and then feel the posterior aspect of his shoulder. You could also add an axial load this way. That was at 60 degrees, no issues. And now we're gonna come 90 to 100. Horizontal adduction. I'm still keeping my hands on the patient so that he feels secure even when I'm moving my hands around, I'm not just gonna like let go and then come back. You wanna continue to hold on the stabilization, make sh making sure the patient is secure and supported throughout the entire test. Again, we're coming to 100. Horizontal A deduction, continuing to give him support and stability with my assistance. Then I'm feeling the posterior aspect of his shoulder. I can add a bit of axial load, but that's not mandatory. Okay, no issues. And his humeral head did not slip or slide posterior in the glenoid cavity because he has plenty of stability there.